we have been talking about manipulation tactics and love bombing is one of them. This woman asked this question in the dating subreddit saying, why do men fall in love within three business days? They are not in love. It is love bombing. And I read through some of the comments. Nobody is mentioning love bombing. Now, it is 674 comments. Obviously, I didn't read them all, but I would have thought that love bombing would come through. No man is falling in love within three business days. It's just not happening. Okay, so she says, no, seriously, I've only recently started taking dating somewhat seriously, and it's occurred to me that a lot of guys are a little reckless with their emotions. I've had a couple of love confessions, one after only two weeks of talking, and they all seem to be adamant that they have never met someone as kind or empathetic or as interesting as me. Now, while I do think I'm a great person, I don't think I'm that great. For example, one guy expressed that he would like to try a different style, so I suggested he download Pinterest and made him a board with some style in inspo. He maintains that it's the nicest thing a girl has ever done for him. I'm concerned. Is the bar really just that low? I feel like I just show a little interest and yet it seems to have this profound effect that makes me wonder what kind of conversations experiences are the norm for men. You guys good? Now, <clears throat> she says... Um, I do think I'm a great person. I don't think I'm that great because you probably aren't within two weeks. He probably doesn't know you. This is why it's called love bombing. They are piling on way too much, way too soon to the point where this should be a red flag. Blink blinking lights should be going off because yes, people can be appreciative and say, wow, thanks, that's pretty cool. But to like, oh my God, I mean, to make it so like someone took you on a trip to the to Italy or something um, just on a whim. That is what she's talking about as far as um, the response to a Pinterest board. Come on now. This is not real love. And women need to stop being flattered by this. You are not that amazing to where you should like you should feel weird getting this type of attention for something small. So that's why women need to take a step back, understand what love bombing is, and understand um, appropriate responses. This should raise your antenna. You should start thinking like, is he moving too fast? Does he really want something? Are his intentions pure? That's what love bombing does. They need to get their hooks in you quickly for some reason. So like I said, I was hoping to see love bombing in the first few comments. And these are the first few comments. So Confident Belt says they are not in love. It's more likely that any interest from a woman is like drips of water to a person dying of thirst. If these men were this thirsty for attention and affection and whatever from women, you would think that they would be more likable, but instead they neg women, they pull pranks, they are mean-spirited, they neg, all of that. All right, let's keep going. Um, a responsible onion, I'm glad this onion is responsible, says, unfortunately, it really do be that way out here. I'm literally effing dying of thirst half the time, and if I raise my standards, the well dries up, LOL. Specialist Art says, this is really sad. I didn't know other people experienced that. That's why I keep my boyfriend hydrated. Um, a responsible onion says, make sure he never gets thirsty. Ha ha. Scruffy Noodle Boy says, exactly. People really, really, really underestimate how lonely a lot of guys are. But if they are so lonely, why do they act like they hate women? Like they talk about standards, but typically the standards that men talk about are, you know, they have to be... Um, 18 to 25. They <laughs> they have to be a certain weight. They have to, you know, cook and clean for them. They treat women like human robots. They don't treat women like humans. Shady says it gets worse when they assume you get girls, even though you don't. And now you have to carry the burden of misplaced assumptions. They treat you differently. Snake with no name says my first ex really believed I had a line of women waiting Um. I'm sorry, out the door waiting to date me. Her words, not mine. I showed her my empty hinge cue. And maybe I do, but I don't have the slightest clue if I actually do because girls tend to keep quiet. Quimery CD says, because most men don't have a good support network and are love deprived. 
I have a friend who is 38 years old, single, never been in a relationship, recently got into a long distance relationship and is feeling like a teenager. Sleeping Willow says, I can't wait for my chance to be in a relationship for be forever. Um, says, why don't they make friends with each other? Why do men rely on women for literally everything? And Quimere CD says, we don't rely on women for everything. We rely on ourselves for almost everything. As a result, we usually don't have close people. And even when we do have close friends, we don't share our feelings with each other because we have been taught to be self-reliant. We must not bother each other with our problems. At some point, men will have to unpack that society has harmed them by putting emotions in the realm of the woman and that men need to be stoic and, you know, blank faced and not have feelings outside of anger and confidence and passion. Like you can have some other emotions, but this culture, patriarchy has harmed them, but they won't see it that way. Mr. Prador says, because being friends is not the same as love. I have a lot of good and close friends who I would sacrifice so much for, and I know who would do the same for me. Still, I do not love them, and they do not love me. That's it. There are lots of men who are deprived of any kind of relationship between people, friendships included, and for these people, it could be beneficial. On the other hand, there are a lot of men who have good friendships and social circles, but are deprived of love that you get from relationships. So at some point, these men will have to start listening to women and what women want and expect from a relationship to turn these things around and become the type of men that women actually want to be in a relationship. Because from where I stand and listening to women over and over again, what I see is women are opting out because men are not sending their best. They're just not. Now, Lucky7 says, are you here talking about 4B forever? Are you here to sh- on men in every comment or something? I've seen like five comments for you in here, and it's just giving negative attitudes for men. Now, this commenter here, and I need to leave it here, his name is Mr. Pump and Dump. <laughs> He's commenting on her name saying her name is 4B forever, but his name is Mr. Pump and Dump. So I'm not sure he has the best name to be worried about her name. <laughs> Anyways, join the conversation, ladies. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. The next segment will have two different posts. They're going to start off with pictures, and I'm going to talk about it. There are going to be some triggering themes in here because grown men are doing things or pursuing teenagers. There is zero chance that I would ever want to take a time machine back in time before women had full autonomy of our bodies and when it was perfectly fine for adult men to chase teenagers. So we have a picture of Muhammad Ali. This is captioned, Muhammad Ali at 24 flirts with future wife Belinda Boyd, 16, at a bakery shop in Chicago. They married a year later in 1967. So he married her at 17, and he is a grown man. So this comment speaks a little bit more about it. It says, from Life magazine in the 1970s, Ali had been married before to a cocktail waitress, Sandra Roy, from 1964 to 66. She was unwilling to succumb to the background role required by Ali's faith, according to Life magazine. After his divorce from Roy, Ali was quoted saying that his next wife would be a young woman around 17 or 18, one that I can raise to my own way of thinking. He then married 17-year-old Belinda. Please know and understand that men going after teenage girls has always been a thing. They have they looked at us as something to mold and, you know, create to serve them for like forever. So women need to know and understand these red pill talking points are nothing new. Bet my last Krispy Kreme says the very definition of groomer right there. And Reindeer Moon says he didn't even need to groom her. It was an arranged marriage. Her parents just gave her to him. This is another part of rubbish culture. Basically raising a girl to give away like or sell in some cultures, because some parents actually get money for their children, their daughters. 
so much culture is just rubbish. Step On Me says, weirdly comforting to know this isn't just a 21st century incel red pill thing. Uncomforting that it runs much deeper than that. Erba Derba Schnurber says, wait, did you think that grooming and graping underage girls was a new thing? Dega Knight says, oh man, wait until you hear about what goes on in the Middle East. Um, they CQ says, you don't even have to go to the Middle East. It literally happens in America as well. And then that person says, it's not part of American culture though. Yes, it is. What? What? It is totally a part of American culture. We're shifting things, thankfully, but men preying on girls is talked about daily. If some people look at Ali as a hero, they're not going to like these next couple of comments. C. Wayne G says, I mean, he didn't even groom her. He was just a child rapist at that point. Um, Andreas Dasso says, we have to be careful with words. It's creepy as F to me, but she was above the age of consent that, um, there back then. If I have this right, this is Illinois, and it was 16, then 17 now, and this is assuming they had X when she was 16. Boo, boo. Okay. Um, C. Wayne G says, our definition of a child can technically change over time. True. But Muhammad Ali specifically was going for someone so young that he could teach them right. He wants an, he wanted a very young woman who was impressionable. And well, she was a child. The law really isn't important on that matter. Laws are not morally invaluable things. St um, statutory grape is a term we have for this exact same situation. Um, as child consent, I'm sorry, if a child consents, like sure, they consented, but they are a child. They are a child. This woman was not a woman. She was a girl. So now this next one is even worse than this Muhammad Ali one. Listen to this caption. In 1966, a 17 year old Franca Voila was kidnapped and held captive for eight days and repeatedly raped in an attempt to force her into a rehabilitating marriage, matrimonio repertore, as was custom at the time. Voila refused to marry her rapist and was the first woman in Italy to do so. So at that time, you could grape a woman and she would just get married. This is literally the first woman to do so. So how many women in um, Italy actually married their rapist? And and when you when you do so, that says that there should be no consequences for rape. If you just make the, the, the victim go along with it, that shows these men that there's no consequences. So why should they hold back? That is the very, that is the very tenor, that the foundation of great culture, like literally epitomizes it. Here's the young girl, 17 years old, Franco Voila. And here's the man. Look how self-satisfied he looks. He, he's not repentant. And look at these people, look at him. Like literally they don't, look at these men. They know that there's no consequences in their culture at that time because women's bodies just belong to men. You could just go grab you one, pluck one off. And now you have one. That is how they were treating these women. I'm sorry, that was a girl. She was a teenager. Okay, so the caption on this. Um, by refusing to marry her rapist, Franca was not only rejecting Filippo Melodia's advances, but also the entire social and legal structure that had oppressed women for generations. She and her family pressed charges against Melodia, accusing him of kidnapping, rape, and intimidation. This decision did not come without consequences. The family was ostracized by much of their community, and property and their property was burned. The law that allowed rapists to marry their victims to escape pres um, prosecution, Article 544 of the Italian Penal Code, was not repealed until 1981. Her family got ostracized and they burned their house down because she did not want to marry her rapist. How messed up is that? And they did not repeal that until 1981. <laughs> that... <laughs> That's a mess. All right. Feel a great relief says incredibly brave of her and what scumbags in her community for siding with the grapist. 
um, and her attackers look disgustingly pleased with themselves. I'm glad her attacker met the end that he did. Um, Feel a great relief says, I know, their incredibly punchable smirks are blood boiling. Um, Kitty Hawkwind says, another great article. I wonder who unalive Melodia and why. Seems odd given the national sentiment at the time was still somewhat accepting of the crime he committed. I wonder if Wallace Fowler was somehow connected to the right people. And here's the answer. Um, it says, Wikipedia says Melodia was the nephew of a me member of Castra Nostra. It could have been something his uncle did or the mafia decided he had brought too much negative attention onto himself and the mob or he had done something else stupid to, and gotten unalive for it. Um, and then at the bottom, it says, in May 1967, Melodia was found guilty and sentenced to 11 years in prison. Several of his accomplices were acquitted, while others received lighter sentences. Melodia was released from prison in 1967 and was taken out on April 13th, 1978, in a mob-style execution before he could return to Sicily. And a good ending for her. Professional Cat says, yes, but also. While her courage in the face of adversity is undeniable, Franca Boila's life did not end with her trial. She went on to marry the man she loved, Giuseppe Ruisi, in 1960. Their wedding was a public celebration, attended not only by local well-wishers, but also acknowledged by the national leaders. The president of Italy at the time, Giuseppe Saragat, sent a wedding gift to the couple, and Pope Paul the, the 11th invited them to a private audience. I love this for her. So much respect for this courageous woman. Thank you for sharing her story. It is a mess. It is terrible that women and girls faced so much at that time simply by being born female. And I wish we could say that things have gotten so much better, but we can't really say that because child marriage is still a thing and it's a thing globally, even if it's not talked about as much here in the United States. Women and girls are still being trafficked and we still have a long way to go. Anyways, let me know what you think about these two posts. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Okay, it's fall, ladies. Hobo sexual season is here. It is here. These pests that want to nest and rest are going to be looking for a woman to latch onto because it's getting cold outside. They're going to be watching your social media presence. They're going to be checking if your nails are done. They're going to see that your hair stays tight, that your makeup is just done. They're going to see a woman and say, that woman has a warm home with a nice couch with the good throw um the throw the good throw covers. They're going to know that. <laughs> They're going to want to get into your home and burrow into your couch. So this woman, the dopest Haitian, says, "Can y'all men please stop flirting like this? I have the ick so bad now. Why he have to ruin it?" So they're getting to know each other. Um, she says right here. Tell me about yourself. He says, we can do that in person. It's 10 o'clock. I'm going to be going to sleep soon. Got to get up early. She says, okay, well, good night. He says, by the way, I like your car, especially the inside. She says, oh, thank you. I love her. He asked her, you paid it off? <laughs> she says, not yet. I've had her two years. She said, and he said, okay, Miss Good Credit, when you going to co-sign mine? He asked this woman he just met to co-sign a car. I know men like to joke, but please know and understand that their jokes mean something a lot more. He says this, and remember, it's about 10 o'clock. She did not respond to that. And at 5.56 in the morning, he says, morning. <laughs> then the dopest Haitian says, wait, y'all, it's more. Please keep in mind, we met this past Friday. It's been three days. And I'm going to come back to the it's more part because she has some more screenshots. Um, Queen Pin Mesh says, "Good Miss Good Credit, cosign mine, hashtag blocked. Please block these people. Um, v Ellison said, a man I'd known for about two weeks asked me to cosign something. Never, ever would I cosign anything. Flight Dream says, I don't see the problem. Females will get your number. Now she need her lights paid. 
a few will try you like, excuse me, but I think Buddy trying to spark convo, it ain't that serious. All you got to say is, we see if we get that far on that level, it's been three days. Uh, no, we're not going to get to that level. Ladies, don't get to this level of co-signing anything for a man. Beautifully, she says, he's dusty and looking for your help and letting it be known early. Yes, he is telling her early. Please take this for what it is. Um, this person says, um, is this a good size? Says he got he got a mission in mind with your money and credit. You dodged one. Black girl Nay says, block him. He looking for somebody to use and take care of him with no intentions on paying you back in any positive way. Block and move on, sis. Um, G Till the best says, boy out here asking for a cosign. That's wild as F. I would have understood if he was asking for X, but a cosign, LOL. Mi bossa says, girl, three days and he, okay, done. Um, this person, why you keep replying to him, girl? You just made me mad. <laughs> the city speak says, so y'all meet at a bar and he was already in your car. You want more out of him, but not yourself. And the dopest Haitian says, because when you meet someone at the bar, you walk them to their car at the end of the night, weirdo. And my car has stock tent. So it's literally a glass house. Use your brain. So that's how he got to see the inside of her car. Um, JG Paradox says, he asked you to co-sign for a car twice. Yeah, I can see your aggravation. Just be like, no, or keep accepting it as if it's like a joke. Now, here is the rest of the screenshots. He, the man says, and why you ain't answer my question, lady, night before you went to bed? She says, oh, that's not happening. He says, it was a test. Now I know where we stand. She, she says, did I pass the test? He said, no. Uh, she says, laughing my butt off now. That's crazy. Um, he says, I mean, you cool. I'm going to still rock with you, but it's just going to be a limit on how far I stick my neck out. She says, we literally met three days ago. He says, I know it's cool. Long as you don't ask me to do no major, sh we all good. But how often you be getting a babysitter? I'm like, what? What is that? Um, okay. She says, she says to this part where he asks, as long as you don't ask me to do nothing major, we all good. She says, is this a joke? Because no way you expected me to agree to sign my name for a car and I don't even know your last name. And then he said right here, when do you be getting a babysitter? Again, he asked that twice. And she says, so now you're ignoring what I said. <laughs> and that's where the screenshots end. But they are having two different conversations. He he was supposedly testing her. She, she failed the test. Um, I think that many of us should aim to fail that test. Be aware she's just messing with that man. So Devon, it says, no, no effing way right now. Sis, why is he still getting responses for you? And she says, at this point, I'm just having a good time with homie. I'm tickled. So I hope that means that she's just joking and not seriously considering talking to this man. I don't see where she says that she has blocked him, but this is where the screenshots end. Anyways, I am going to end it here. Just a reminder pests that want to nest and rest will look to attach to a woman that has her stuff together. You have better accommodations. Your house probably smells like wonderful fragrance of vanilla or citrus or something amazing. You have food and snacks. Don't let them in your home. All right, y'all. Join the conversation. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.